Lawyers of Reddit, what was your oh shit moment in court? Sat in on a personal injury case, where the plaintiff broke their leg in an accident, and had a doctor on the stand as an expert. The woman's lawyer begins questioning the doctor about their experience with leg injuries. He was a well-known orthopedic surgeon in the area. She asks if he's ever treated a tibia fracture, the leg bones are tibia and fibula. To which he only answers no then she starts grilling him with questions about the tibula. After about 6 to 7 questions she asks how did you get a medical license and have been able to practice medicine this long. If you've never treated a tibia fracture? And begins a small rant about going after his credentials and those that gave it to him. To which he simply responds there is no bone named the tibula. The lawyer became beat red and everyone in the room tried their best to keep from laughing including the judge. I was representing a plaintiff in a hit and run case. Plaintiff is testifying and is, despite me preparing them for several hours the previous day, an absolutely terrible witness for her own case. Like, she couldn't even identify the street she was crossing when she was hit by the car. It was a major highway, and we had gone through the sequence of events countless times the day before the hearing. The OS asterisk asterisk T moment came during cross-examination. Defense counsel pulls out a picture of my client dressed up and ready to hit the club which was posted to Facebook the day after the alleged accident. I, thinking quickly, object because the timestamp refers to when it was posted, not when it was taken. Defense counsel show the picture to my client and asked her when the picture was taken. Sure enough, they say it was taken the day after the accident when she was supposedly in unbearable pain. Oh. S asterisk asterisk T. When I was in college I was a bailiff. Guy is on trial for murder. First witness testified that she saw the defendant shoot the victim. Second witness states the same. Police officer testimony is that he arrived at the scene and defendant was there holding the gun. Coroner testimony is that the first bullet hit the victim in the arm. The second bullet hit the victim in the torso and the third bullet hit the victim in the heart which was the fatal shot. UK, bear with me on this one. I was in court listening to the most boring old defense lawyer you've ever seen. He was questioning the arresting officer in the case. It was drugs or something like that. Anyway, he's droning on about every little detail and the magistrate was constantly telling him to hurry along. The arresting officer was getting noticeably annoyed and the room became empty pretty quick. Everyone was very bored and annoyed. He was droning about details that I'm not sure anyone was really listening to or cared about. Anyway, he went over arrest times and the likes with the officer, time he admitted the suspect and released him. He had bored the officer to the point where he was barely paying attention. So he was admitted in at 21.45 on the night in question. Yes. And released the night after. Yes. And that was what? Just after 10 p.m. Yes what time after 10? I don't know. Quarter past 10 maybe. So my client was detained for more than 24 hours um. Wait the penny dropped. The officer let his guard down. And had revealed he kept the defendant for more than 24 hours. Which is the maximum time for detention in the UK. The defense rested. And the magistrate threw the case out immediately. Well played sir. Well played. I think this qualifies, though it wasn't me, that was the lawyer. Got called for jury duty, was at the jury selection phase, and they asked if anyone here thinks they should not. Blah blah. Defendant was in the room. I raised my hand. The defending lawyer looked at me like oh this ought to be good, and asked me to explain. I suggested I tell them in private. He insisted I tell the courtroom. I said, okay. I probably shouldn't be on this jury, because I was on a previous jury for this man which returned a guilty verdict. Lawyer's face went os asterisk asterisk t. Commotion and await, while they looked up records. Yep, verified. Whole jury was now tainted. Everyone goes home, and they start over. I was involved in a pretty messy custody case. The other party was a mess, and had kept the child from my client for a few weeks. Op was playing lots of stupid games, and kept requesting continuances. I requested a drug test, which the judge ordered. However, the op didn't show up for it. To clarify, he did show up, he just stood in front of the toilet for literally 2 hours, and claimed he couldn't pee. I was representing the plaintiff, so the burden was on me. 
I called multiple witnesses that testified to the defendant's drug use. So, opposing counsel decides to call their client for direct examination and asks, you don't use heroin and crack, right? That is, for the non-lawyers, a very stupid question for many reasons. Especially considering his client didn't show up for his drug test. However I fully expected the defendant to just lie and say he was clean. After the question was asked, there was a really long pause and the defendant said, yes I do both of those drugs. My head almost exploded. I didn't ask any questions on cross-examination because I didn't want to muddy the waters. I won and the child is doing great. Not mine but my boss's one. She had to defend a small time delinquent as duty solicitor. Before going to court he asked her what he should do. She explained to him, if he was cooperative and truthful his sentence would be milder. After hearing the case the judge asked him if he wanted to add something. He got up and explained to the judge, my counsel told me to be truthful, so I wanted to tell you that I not only did the robbery I'm being heard for but also several others in the region. He continued to admit to several robberies that had been unsolved yet and everyone, even the state attorney were fascipaming. Mine actually happened while I was sitting in the jury pool during via dire. The case was a double homicide and the jury pool filled the entire courtroom. If you're not familiar with Vidar it is when the lawyers ask the potential jurors questions to determine who they want to sit on the jury and who they want to exclude. It is a long and boring process for almost everyone involved, but 9 tenths it's the most important stage in a case. So the lawyers are asking us questions, and if that question applied to you, you raised your hand and they handed you a microphone to answer the question. The question asked was do you or anyone you know have prior knowledge of this case. So this older gentleman raised his hand, is handed the mic, and proceeds to say yeah I work at the police station as a janitor, and I heard two detectives talking about him asterisk p-o-i-n-t-s to d-e-f-e-n-d-a-n-t asterisk and they were saying he was about as guilty as sin. We all kind of stared open mouthed at this guy, and I started chuckling, because I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Naturally, the defense attorney asked to approach the bench followed quickly the by the state prosecutor. After some quick and energetic whispering, the judge addressed the man. Do you realize what you just did? You potentially poisoned this entire jury pool. I will be calling your boss and you will be hearing about this. You can count on that. You are dismissed sir, but this isn't over. The man was escorted out and then the judge addressed the remaining jury pool which was still in a mostly packed room. Now I want you all to disregard what that man just said. I'm sure if any of you were ever accused of a crime like this, you would want a fair trial and not be condemned. Based on the words of one old man, I have been in court many times since, but never have I seen that level of downright jaw-dropping absurdity again. Literally the first thing I ever did was just a law student intern. Guy has alleged defense on a drug possession case. Drugs found in a jacket. Guy wasn't wearing jacket. They were going to have a very difficult time proving the jacket belonged to my guy. Had a long meeting with client. Explained everything. Client was excited. Day of the preliminary hearing. Guy shows up and sits down directly in front of the officer who arrested him. While wearing the jacket in question. The exact same jacket we were going to say they couldn't prove belonged to him. Not in court, but at a tribunal, and also I was plaintiff, suing for wrongful termination. My rep, so you terminated him, because he was ill employer, yes mister, and he was ill, because he's disabled employer, yes mister, so you fired someone for being disabled employer, yes. Not me but my former law partner. She was in court representing a client I think in a hearing for a restraining order against her soon to be ex-husband. Our client was telling the judge that when they met to exchange the children for visitation, the ex had kicked her. He immediately angrily shouted she can't prove it, I didn't leave a mark. Thanks, buddy. Probably the funniest one I ever came across happened to a colleague. We were prosecutors then. 18 year old defendant applying for bail. He needed a residential address and got his dad to show up at court to confirm that the family home was available to him. Defense lawyer gets old dad to confirm that son can stay at family home. Dad says yes. My fellow prosecutor gets up and asks dad, do you really want him home? Dad goes off the deep end. Jesus. The grief has brought me and his mother 
out all hours, taking drugs, hiding stolen property in the garage, all night parties, I'm on antidepressants and the wife's had a nervous breakdown. Dad goes off on 145 solid minutes, as the defendant gets taken back to the cells, he calls out thanks dad, I owe you one. Two moments in a DUI trial. 1. Passenger is testifying for driver's sobriety, when the DA asks her, you keep saying he was sober, but are you even tips certified, a course for bartenders, so they can recognize drunk patrons. She was. Obligatory anal, but in a pre-mediation meeting once for an uninsured motorist claim an insured had alleged that she couldn't walk without the aid of a cane, and had a pronounced limp after an accident due to a low back injury and a shooting pain in her right leg. The doctor notes didn't support anything but a subjective injury after a few weeks, but she was still treating two years later, and going to new physicians. So, we had her followed covertly to see if she was really using the cane, and had a limp, etc. We got footage of her carrying like four grocery bags in each arm to her car in a Walmart parking lot, walking perfectly fine. When she got to her car she even opened the trunk of the sub without putting any bags down, and lifted the gate with her knee part way. Her elderly mother was with her using a particularly decorative purple cane with a flower pattern on it. They followed her to a doctor appointment an hour later, and she's on video using her mother's cane, and walking with a limp that would give Forrest Gump a run for his money. Never did follow up on how that played in the mediation, but I can only imagine it gave some attorney an OS asterisk asterisk t moment. Person I was representing was on trial for assault in the third degree in DUI. In my state A3 means you've assaulted an aid worker or police officer and is a felony. The allegations are that he was very verbally abusive to the officers and, at one point, kicked one in the face. We're sitting at the defendant's table and the officer is testifying about the statements my guy made to him, including some pretty horrific name calling. Out of nowhere, my client screams you're a ref asterisk asterisk k-i-n-g liar. F asterisk asterisk k-u, you son of a b asterisk asterisk ch. We lost that trial. Another time, the judge asked a client whether anyone had coerced him into pleading guilty, and he said yeah, my attorney. I about s asterisk asterisk t my pants, but he laughed and said I'm joking. No. Not a lawyer, but a defendant. As a teenager I got busted with a couple of buddies throwing eggs at cars. We were only actually in the courtroom for our sentencing. There was no trial. The judge called each of us up individually to ask us if we had anything to say. One of my friends tells the judge that he is a good kid who doesn't normally do things like this. Lie. We used to do it all the time. And that I was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. I wish there was a video of my other friend and I sitting in the benches watching this happen. We simultaneously dropped our heads into our hands because we couldn't believe that idiot just said that. The judge was not pleased and she took the opportunity to remind him that going to a store, buying eggs, going to another location across town and then throwing those eggs at cars was not just being in the wrong place at the wrong time. I'm not a lawyer, but I was a character witness for my childhood dog in a civil trial between our neighbors and my parents. Opposing counsel was questioning me, I wasn't even out of elementary school at the time, and he asked if our dog was aggressive. She was a rottweiler and very loving, and incredibly protective of me and my siblings. His final question to me is one I will never forget. He asked did your father tell you what to say before you came into court today? I responded yes. Then he asked what did he tell you to say, I said the truth. Now I was too young to remember the courtroom reaction, but according to my father the judge audibly guffawed, and the opposing counsel lost all the wind out of his sails. I was at a hearing arguing that my client was wrongfully terminated because the employer failed to abide by the proper procedures. During the hearing a witness for the employer tried to offer documents that were fraudulently altered in order to make it look like the proper procedure was followed. I noticed the alteration. Opposing counsel quickly got that witness out of the room and after a quick adjournment, my client got a large settlement. Opposing counsel was a nightmare. Everything late. His work was extremely subpar, and so forth. Accused me of lying multiple times when he had dropped the ball. 
During another hearing in which he did another dumb move, judge says I'm glad you are the last case on the call, and all of the other attorneys have left the room. So they aren't here to hear me say that you are a terrible attorney. During jury selection. I can't be a juror due to the fact I'm kinda racist. Not a lawyer, but I had a big OS asterisk asterisk t moment. I was in court for driving, while suspended in a county, and in front of a judge, that were both notorious for putting people who did that in jail. My license wasn't supposed to be suspended, a pencil pusher forgot to press a button or something and it never got unsuspended after the time was up. I had proof of this, but I was still really nervous. The guy who went up to the judge before me walked to the table, where we were supposed to stand, sat down, and put his feet up on the table. The judge asked him what he was doing, and he gave a flippant answer, and basically told the judge, to get f asterisk asterisk kd. This seriously pissed the judge off. The judge went off on this guy and the guy gave everything right back to him, pissing him off more and more. The judge ended up jailing him for contempt, and had the bailiff cuff the guy, and put him in a chair off to the side, to await the Mars holes who would transport him to the jail. My name gets called. The judge is looking at me, like I'm fresh meat, and he is a great white shark. I'm already thinking to myself okay, if this judge puts you in jail, run over and beat the s asterisk asterisk t out of the guy, that pissed the judge off so badly, he's why you're going to jail. The judge looks down at his paperwork, and back at me, and says you're Mr. Asterisk M Y last name. I said yes sir. He said yeah, we were talking about you earlier I'm going to void your arrest and dismiss this case. Your license was supposed to be valid, and you shouldn't be here. I let out a huge sigh. The judge asked me if I was okay, and I said I had been a bit worried, especially given the guy that was right before me in line. The judge said, don't worry about him. He won't be seeing anything that isn't behind bars for about 90 days. And laughed. Watching a hearing when the defendant said I mean I did stab her. But it was a gentle stabbing. Not a lawyer, but shared an OS asterisk asterisk t moment with one. I hit something in the road and had a tire blow out while driving home from Meps, hit a concrete divider and wound up rolling my car. No injuries and no other vehicles involved received a reckless driving ticket that the officer told me was just procedure and not to be concerned with. Fast forward a month and I'm in court with my lawyer who plans on pointing out this ticket could prevent my hardship enlistment. He's not expecting it to take more than a minute because the issuing officer and prosecutor are on board. Q group OS asterisk asterisk t moment. I'm fourth on the docket and the judge has just handed out maximum sentences for all three prior defendants. People are getting 6 to 12 months, having licenses revoked, for little stuff. Prosecutor gets screamed at the instant he opens his mouth. Police officer is told to shut up, while answering a question the judge asked. My lawyer is told he's about to be held in contempt. I'm starting to think I'm gonna get 3 squares and a cot, just not where I planned on getting them. The judge told me to step forward, while shuffling my case paperwork and my lawyer just gave me a look. That said I'm so sorry, case dismissed in the interest of justice, and if any more idiots waste his time with nonsense like this again everyone is spending the night in county. Medical malpractice defense lawyer here representing hospital slash doctors. This was not my OS asterisk asterisk t moment, but plaintiff's OS asterisk asterisk t moment. For context, usually at trial, both plaintiff and defendant will have an expert physician testify as to their opinion, to whether the doctor slash hospital performed everything correctly. I thoroughly researched plaintiff's expert, who was an ob slash gin, baby delivery, and found out he had been suspended a number of times for his own botched deliveries, and giving incorrect medical testimony to help plaintiff's cases. During the actual day of trial, Turns out he was not licensed to practice medicine independently without supervision from another physician, and he was one year into his three-year suspension. Plaintiff's lawyers had no idea about their own expert's background and they just sat there with a blank look on their face. Needless to say, during cross-examination, we destroyed his credibility and won a trial. I was prosecuting a contempt action in family court, something that basically never works, and everyone in the room could tell I was winning. The other side was unprepared, out of arrogance, 
and I was basically ripping this guy to shreds on cross-examination, which his lawyer didn't even think would happen, because he expected the case to be dismissed. At the end of the trial, the judge ruled for me, and stated that she found the defendant's testimony to be untrustworthy. I was shocked at winning a contempt trial to begin with, but then this exchange happened. Defendant's attorney, your honor, now that you have found my client's testimony to be untrustworthy I'm requesting a continuance in order to prepare further witnesses. This concept is shocking in and of itself, because to even think you can bring more witnesses after you rest your case is laughable. Judge, you had your shot and you missed, counsel. Defendant's attorney, your honor, there was no way I could have anticipated that you'd find my client's testimony untrustworthy, and as such I didn't have the opportunity to prepare other witnesses in support of his position. Judge, that may be an argument for your career, counsel, but it holds no water with me. See you this afternoon for sentencing. For those who didn't pick up on it, the judge basically told the lawyer on the record in front of his client that she expects him to get sued for malpractice because he f asterisk asterisk ked up so royally that s asterisk asterisk t was men bloning on multiple levels. Not a lawyer, but I witnessed my ex-wife try to argue with a judge that she couldn't be accused of kidnapping our daughter because our daughter was legally emancipated. Not a spoiler, she wasn't. At the time of the kidnapping, my ex had legal statutes written on small sheets of paper she had torn out of books in the jail library, and she kept arguing with the judge, after being told that none of it mattered. After the fifth time my ex interrupted the judge with her nonsense, the judge slammed her hands down, stood up, leaned over her bench, and told my ex that she had been a juvenile court judge for 20 years, and was well aware of the statutes. If she interrupted one more time then she would be held in contempt and spend several months more in jail. My lawyer held up his folder in front of his face to hide his grin during this exchange. I walked out with full legal and physical custody of my daughter, court supervised visitation for my ex, and a full restraining order. I was interning during law school prosecuting domestic violence cases. The deputy DA asked me to talk for the first time during a guy's arraignment for beating his wife. An arraignment is when the defendant hears the charges against them and pleads guilty or not guilty basically. When the judge calls on me to speak I got insanely nervous and told the defendant that his charge carried a maximum penalty of 30 years when it was actually 30 days. He freaks out, the crowd, some in the gallery, were his family and friends. Gasps. The judge basically stops me and says I think you mean 30 days counselor. After which everyone, including the defendant, laughed at me. Edit because a lot of you are worried about this. The evidence was pretty weak and the facts did not bear charging anything other than the lowest level misdemeanor. Which, in conjunction with this being a first offense meant that we were seeking two things primarily. Counseling slash anger management classes and probation. The intent being that any future problems can hopefully be avoided, and if not, we could stick the defendant with a harsh punishment the next time, when we'd hopefully have better facts slash evidence. Not exactly in court, but I was defending a juvenile robbery case, where there was very little evidence. There was supposed to be two guys, but they only picked up this one kid, he had no stolen property on him. He was picked up like outside his own house, wearing different clothes than the victim had initially said. This kid was on the honor roll at school, his family seemed kind and were involved. He wrote poetry and played instruments. I actually believed it was a legit mistaken identity case. I went to meet with one of the kid's mentors for a character reference, and he exactly matched the description of the other robber. I was the dumbass that almost screwed myself. I had two charges in two different courts. I accepted the first plea which almost always carries probation, but my plea didn't have that condition. When it came time to accept the second plea, the prosecutor didn't include probation because she assumed my first charge put me on probation. She said as much to the judge and me being a big dummy almost corrected her. My lawyer grabbed my shoulder and is asterisk asterisk t you not told me to shut the f asterisk asterisk k up, she doesn't know. Unfortunately I'm not allowed to say too much but basically, on charges of growing marriage Lana, stated he was growing herbs for medicine, and gestured air quotes with his hands, and then whispered I kid you not, marriage Lana. 
bro. Represented a pro bono client that had just turned 18 and was charged with serious property damage. I walk into his bail hearing and the judge looks at him and goes I knew you'd be back as an adult. The judge then turns to me and says counselor, you may want to learn about your client's history. No bail. Edit. To answer some of the questions below. 1. I considered it to be extremely inappropriate and objected to it. Juvenile records are sealed for a reason. The judge overruled the objection, but made sure to articulate that his denial of bail was for reasons related to the instant case. The firm I was at had a pro bono program and worked with the public defender service in the area. The judge at the bail hearing wasn't the judge for all other hearings in the case. He just happened to be the one handling bail hearings that afternoon. Never ask a question to which you don't know the answer. Prosecutor suggested to me client that the canned goods he had burgled were to be used to trade for drugs. Me thinking the idea ludicrous asked my client whether he has ever traded food for drugs. To which he replied that he once exchanged a frozen chicken for heroin. Needless to say I didn't win that one. Now, but have been on a number of juries. Kid was being charged with arson in his high school. First sign of trouble. Prosecutor is trying to get the investigator to say something specific. Note, this was a fire investigator. What did you see? It was a bathroom. Anything else? Sink. What else did you see? Mirrors. What else? Trash can. Anything in the trash can. Paper towels anything unusual about the paper towels? They were burned. Thank you then she calls the co-conspirator who has made a plea deal. Who according to opening statements will testify that the kid defendant started the fire. The kid spoke and acted like a stoner. What happened? We had some aftershave. We got some paper towels and poured the aftershave on the towels. Then I lit them. I mean he lit them. You're on a ride like a recess. End of trial. Not a lawyer, but was working at the jail when an inmate came back from court and immediately went on suicide watch. Apparently he was up for a plea deal and was only looking at 6 months, but started questioning some of the facts, which let in a ton of previously denied evidence. This new evidence linked him to 6 B&Es and rapes. He walked out of court facing a 99 year sentence, which he was certain to get, all because he opened his mouth. Edit. The lawyers were arguing over a pair of the victim's panties. He apparently chimed in with something he shouldn't have known. That brought in evidence that was previously inadmissible to not only this case, but five other burglary slash rapes. Evidence, which by the transport officer's words, good enough to metaphorically f asterisk asterisk k him for a hundred years. I'm not an attorney, but a reporter who's beat is the county courthouse, so I've had plenty of these moments happen in front of me. A guy was convicted of attempting to murder several police officers. At his sentencing, the prosecutor revealed the defendant got a prison to two while he was awaiting sentencing of a tombstone with the names of all the cops he attempted to kill. But the defendant still had the audacity to beg for a lenient sentence. He got a few hundred years in jail. Edit. Clarification in the third paragraph. Do you see the defendant here in court? Witness slash victim looks at each jury member then everyone in the audience. Nope. Judge hides his face behind file folder. Are you sure? Maybe over on this side. Witness looks confused. I'm not sure. I point at defendant. Maybe over at this table by that lawyer. Yeah. Maybe. Keep in mind defendant slash victim knew each other very well. Edit. Format and spelling. Edit 2. I use the defendant's name, and he was in plain view from the witness stand. I think the witness was just nervous, because he was buddies with the defendant. Yes, my questions couldn't have been more leading. Ock was fine with me creating apathy in the minds of the jury. <laughs> Lawyer here. I had a pre-trial conference at 9am at a court about 2 hours away. So I wake my ass up super early to drive an s asterisk asterisk tty weather to the conference. I get there, and we're waiting for the other, in town, attorney. All the while I'm grumbling to myself about how I'm from out of town and I can still make it on time. Finally the court calls the other attorney's office, and gets a receptionist who tells us through tears that other attorney passed away the night before. Needless to say I was just happy to still be alive, and we rescheduled for a few months later. 
final but my buddy is going through a nasty divorce and I went with him to the initial hearing for support. Turns out his wife lied all over her deposition about everything from how much money he's making to being a violent drunk. She then tried to admit a secret recording she made of an argument that she baited him into having. His lawyer asks where the recording took place, which was in California, a two-party consent state. Whoops. Make sure to like and subscribe for more daily content. Thanks for watching.